What's up, Lore Masters? Today's video will be an honest to God breakdown of the positives and negatives of the recent trailer for season two of Star Trek Discovery. It's going to be an in-depth analysis of the trailer, which means taking two minutes worth of footage and making it into about 20 minutes. So if that's not your cup of tea, feel free to go through my Starship lore playlist. You can check that out in the top right hand corner right about now. Also, if you're going to watch this video, know that I'm doing this and will not make any money off of it because of CBS. If you want to support the channel, please stay till the end to find out how. With that out of the way, let's just get into it. We have always looked to the stars to discover who we are. And hidden there. So I said this in the first reaction live stream, but the first 11 to 15 seconds, I actually like. It asks questions that a lot of Trek endeavors to answer. I mean, what's out there? What can be explored? What will we find? And how does that impact us? It has a very next generation and Voyager feel to it at least the good aspects of those respective series. So very well done. And hidden there is a message. A secret made of space and time, visible only to those open enough to receive it. Like what the actual fuck? Okay, so this is fantasy, it's horror. I sincerely tried to think back and take a look at anything that might be similar to this. I, I didn't think that there was, but I guess you could loosely say this is just the next step from what we saw in the TNG movies. First Contact and Nemesis really appeared to have the similar feel that we see with Michael, so I guess I can't be too upset about it. Though I will say that visually, this is a very interesting shot. What has happened to Michael and why is she in the wreckage? It even has similarities to what we see in the first season, kind of like a flashback or a callback to when she was at her home and the Klingons had attacked. I also find the Kerrigan-like figure very interesting. I like how she reflects off of the glass of the suit as well. I mean, again, this isn't bad for a sci-fi flick, something generic. I don't feel like it's Trek necessarily, maybe somewhat Nemesis, but Overall, for sci-fi, it's not bad. But again, it just doesn't feel like Trek to me. I have to admit, this really angers me from a continuity standpoint. I mean, this isn't an updated look of the Enterprise, it's a fracking reimagining. That said, in the next clip, I'm going to be far, far less biting in the updates that are done that could be considered continuity breaking. So that's something I have to reflect on. If I was looking at this from a reimagining standpoint, I think it's a beautiful ship. I think it's fun. It's just not consistent if we're going to say that it's in, quote unquote, the prime timeline. Christopher Pike requests permission to come aboard. What? No. Wait, what? Oh my god. No, what? What? Well, Commander, this is awkward, but the best way to get into a cold ship. This is awkward, but the best way to get into a cold stream is to jump right in. I'm here to take command of the Discovery under Regulation 19, Section C. Okay, so let's break down this scene. Now, the transporter effects are very cool. They're nifty, they're fun, they're very science fiction, but not Star Trek. That said, if you look at the JJ vs. Transporter system, it's not all that different. In fact, I would say that this is a homage to the JJ vs. Transporter effects. I mean, if we're honest, Into Darkness didn't really give a homage or use a similar transporter effect. They simply did something new. And this is that next step. This is taking JJ-verse and moving into something new. I guess my only problem here is that they didn't have to do this. I mean, they claim to care about continuity, right? Well, the next generation and Deep Space Nine did transporter effects that were still consistent, but updated. They looked like they were from the original series, just the next step. And you're telling me you couldn't have done that here? You want to look like JJ-verse and be more flashy? Fine, but don't tell me they couldn't have done something more in line with TNG and DS9. This isn't a homage. This isn't supposed to make me think that they were doing something that was consistent with continuity. The next piece is the uniforms, and I guess this is where some of the hypocrisy comes from on my side, mainly the fact that you have that of the Discovery and that of the Enterprise. If you've been watching my uniform series, you know that ultimately, I guess I can't have an issue with these looking so drastically different. I suppose it's possible that the Enterprise is doing deep space exploration and thus the uniform requirements are different from that of the Discovery. Kind of like how you have Arctic and Desert camo. This uniform does not look like the uniform we originally see with Captain Pike, but it does look like that of Captain Kirk. 
I don't necessarily have an issue with this. It keeps the same sense of what they had, it's just a bit updated. And again, this could be a, a homage, not a reimagining. It's consistent enough to be something that's updated, but not throwing the baby with the bathwater out. I think I'm giving too much credit. This uniform, as I stated, looks like that of Captain Kirk. It leads me to believe that they weren't doing a visual update, but didn't know Star Trek enough to know that Captain Pike would have been wearing something different. It's just lazy writing. Your directive is only instituted when an imminent threat is detected. Federation sensors picked up seven red bursts spread out across more than 30,000 light years. From a storytelling aspect, this is intriguing to me. I, I don't hate it. So Captain Pike comes aboard the Discovery to take command. The captain is leaving the best ship in the fleet, and it's the Discovery that is the only ship that can help. Why? The Enterprise is superior in every way. A Constitution class could eat a Crossfield's lunch any day of the week. Is it the spore drive? I mean, what's going on? Why would they be doing this? It's, it's intriguing. It makes me ask questions. It's good storytelling. So now we have more information, which adds a bit of mystery. The directive is only used in imminent danger. We have a phenomenon with seven red bursts. We don't know what's going on. All right, cool, you're pulling me in. Let's take a look at some more. These mysterious signals are beyond anything we understand. Is it a greeting? A declaration of malice? Let's find out. Aye, sir. Hell yes. Captain Pike has come to ask the assistance of the Discovery crew to look into something that may or may not be friendly, to boldly go where no one has gone before. This is awesome Trek. That's, um, that's fantastic music. I'm glad that they had something so awesome just, uh, just followed up by that music. Sorry, I, uh, I think I'm gonna need this after hearing that music, so, uh, just... Sorry. Okay, so wait, what? Trek is about going out and finding new species, but this makes the heroes seem very gun happy. I suppose it's consistent, just coming off the hills of a devastating war, but God help them if they try to use the we come in peace because this is completely inconsistent with how Starfleet generally operates. You know what my Trek needs? Fucking Starfighters. Because that's what I think of in Star Trek. Especially Deep Space Nine. Nothing but fucking Starfighters. And before anyone talks about that one episode where you had a Starfighter pilot that died, you can get fucked. So again, this is somewhat interesting, and this is what I hate about this entire two minute video. Some things are really good. We have some good concepts and then some horrible concepts, but this is an interesting concept. I'm betting this is connected to Kerrigan, though we don't have a lot to go on. Six seconds to impact. I am in total free fall. Trust us, Discovery has you. Right, ladies? <laughs> oh yeah, absolutely. Oh dear. Thank God this culturally diverse group of women are able to save this cis white gendered male who we know will ultimately be fried alive. I mean, personally, I was worried we wouldn't get those brownie points in. And also again, we got starfighters. Okay, so more than those complaints, and honestly, those are nitpicks. I honestly wouldn't really mention them in most situations, but this entire scene has a Han Solo movie feel to it. Han Solo, because that did so well. This just feels like it's trying to knock off Star Wars to a degree, and not even the good Star Wars, the bad Star Wars movies. This is the power of math, people! Okay, I love Tilly and I love Stamets. Uh, Tilly's arc of growing and becoming a Starfleet officer and her helping save the day is awesome to me. Also, Stamets, who hated everyone, becoming more and more friends with Tilly. I just enjoy the characters and their arcs, so this part is pretty cool. We have someone in common. My foster brother, Mr. Spock. He took leave. It's as if he'd run into a question he couldn't answer. Spock is linked to these signals, and he needs help. All right, let's remove all of my bias from the first season and all of the real-life stupidity of cast and crew. Let's say this was season one, and this was the first trailer I've ever encountered. It's weird that Spock has a stepsister. It's still eye-rolling, but... I have to say, this is kind of cool to me. So Spock left for a bit. He had a question he couldn't answer, and now we have this phenomena that's attached to him somehow. That's 
pretty cool. Now, unfortunately, I think Discovery is just going to try to get more people back by including Spock and will ruin the character. But if I wasn't pessimistic, you'd have me interested. collision course with a pulsar. Oh, what a relief. Thought we were all gonna die. Ha! Ah, okay, you got a chuckle out of me there. Well done. Wherever our mission takes us, we'll try to have a little fun along the way. Good to know with what looks like you're going to have massive casualties on your ship that you can at least enjoy yourself, Pike. Ruffle a few feathers. I look forward to it. Okay, so why is he wearing the Discovery uniform now? I mean, that's interesting to me, but beyond that, didn't Burnham go through an arc about how she needs to stick with Starfleet ideals and not ruffle feathers? Isn't this fun, Pike? Hit it. Okay, I really like this sequence, but you know why? It reminds me of JJ Verse. Uh, this would be okay if it was alternate or a JJ Verse run series. What? Just, like, just stop lying. <laughs> Now this will be fun if this plays a large role. Where the hell are they? What's going on with this specific scene? I'll, I'll be curious to see where it goes from there. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Linus, you okay? You look a little... Mm -hmm. Yes, I hear it's going around. Bless you. 